I'm getting ready to ship out the uh, Denon DN790R to its new owner, who intends to uh, use it as a mix-down deck from his multi-track reels. And he's got a stack of Maxell XL2 tapes that he intends to use. So I'm going to bias and optimize the deck before I ship it for this tape and uh, just really dial this in for him. Get it as good as I can get it. So here it is. Did a nice job packing it. Thank you for that. These are great tapes, uh, very low noise. Sometimes can be a little bit difficult to bias, but boy, once you get them dialed in, they're just, they're wonderful. I love them. Oops. Of course, I don't know the age of this, but um, I know it's old. Freshly opened, but uh, it's got a couple of years on it. Hopefully it's been stored well and uh, we can make it work well. I'm just going to prop this up so I can show more of what I'm trying to do. I get my levels set here. I'll fast forward through a lot of this. Um, I don't know how interesting it is to watch traces on a scope in a video, but I'll do my best. And uh, maybe somebody will appreciate it. I don't know. So I'm getting my levels set. Get the tape put in. And what I'll do is limit the uh, low frequency to about 2,000 hertz here so that it doesn't take so long to go through the, the traces. It won't change on the bottom end. I'm just working on the top end here. And that is the trace as set as I had it set for the TDK, which is excellent. I mean, that looks, that looks really good. Um, So there it is at 20 kilohertz, and that's that's really good. It's probably a little hot, and so there's probably a little bit of distortion here that I don't want. But that's why I'm doing this. I want to get it right. I want to get it right on for him. And I'm not going to just go off the first minute or two of the tape. I'll go different parts of the tape. I'll flip it back and forth. Uh, things can change, especially on an old tape that's been sitting. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to different parts. I'm trying with the, the auto-tune, without the auto-tune, uh, back and forth. Just trying just about everything I can think of to come up with some kind of a uh, standard that I want for this particular tape to meet. It looks really good. You know, for, for an average tape, right where it's at right now would be absolutely fine. But I want to dial this in as close as I can and make it sound as good as I possibly can for his mix downs. Okay, so there it is. Um, auto tuning. Okay, 
And I'm just strictly working on the left channel here because uh, the right channel looked really good. The left channel, which is expected, especially on an older tape, uh, is the outside track. And so that's the one that's going to be the most problematic generally. It's not always that way, but that does seem to be the case most of the time. So just working on that left channel. That's looking pretty good right here, going back and forth. Of course, I'm trying to balance the left and right out as close as I can without getting excess distortion. Uh, the spec on this deck is, I believe, 20 to 20 on metal tape, working on a chrome tape here, a type 2 tape. And so I expect it to be somewhere in the 19 kilohertz range on the top end uh, within about a minus 3 dB is what I'm looking for. And I want that to be under 1% distortion. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm fast forwarding through all this, just kind of showing my process for doing it. Everybody has their own way. This is mine. Here's my distortion test. So now that I've got it dialed where I think it's good, I'm running the distortion. I'm seeing the distortions way out of line on that left channel, 2.3%, uh, which is at zero dB or minus two dB or one dB, right in that range. And that's too much. So I'll balance these out. Now I've got the left and right here. And you can see on the right channel, I'm, you know, much better than that. But what I've done here is I've balanced it out. And the camera stops right here. I apologize. And at this point, I was having a hard time reaching what I wanted to reach and still have everything in the camera view. So I, I put the deck back down where I could see what I'm doing. So sorry about that, but that's what I have to do. It's it's really hard to get the right camera angles and, and all that and work and concentrate on what you're doing. <laughs> it's very difficult for me. Some people can do it fine, but I, I have a hard time. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going back and forth as much as I can, uh, checking distortions and frequency responses. Uh, this particular instrument doesn't do both at the same time. I had one that did that, but unfortunately I sold it. And so I have to do them separately. And, and that's, that's fine. I have, a, I have a procedure and it works, it works well. What I'm expecting to get here is 20 to uh, 19 kilohertz with a type two tape in an envelope of about plus or minus three dB at a distortion level under 1%. That's what I'm working for. And I do get it and I better it actually. I don't expect much more than that because this is a modern deck and it had, uh, you know, it's a modern design. It had modern components. And so it was already probably about as close to spec as it could before I started. But what I did manage to do was get the noise level down and get the uh, frequency response slightly better with, you know, I think maybe slightly better distortion. Again, I'm just making all kinds of different tests here. I don't even know uh, which which one I'm doing here. But here's a full frequency response test. And 
and of course the bass is is fantastic uh, here at you know 20 db it's still right around minus one db or i mean at 20 hertz it's right around minus one excellent bass response and up here into the 18 uh, these are the steps that that my instrument shows it doesn't show a 19 it shows an 18.5 so again, I'm a little bit off on that left channel. I keep working on it a little bit more. Right channel will go right on out to 20, which exceeds the uh, factory spec. And the left channel is a little bit short. Um, I found in different parts of this tape, flipping back and forth, uh, flipping directions, Flip, changing different parts of the tape, I found that um, I could hit that left channel with no problem at certain points. So I have to take all these things into account when I'm trying to set the bias on it and optimize it. Um, you know, I don't want it to reach a certain point in the tape where it's just totally distorting, but I want to balance that out where the whole tape sounds good. And that's the reason I'm going through all this. So here's my noise, uh, noise floor, minus 57.4 you know, and my, almost minus 58 on the right channel. That's excellent. I think the spec on it is around minus 65 with Dolby. This is without Dolby. So I'm very happy with the noise floor. And again, it's a very old tape. So that's a very acceptable number. In fact, it's... I think pretty good. Again, just doing doing multiple tests at different levels. So that's how it turned out. And I ended up with uh, uh, about 20 to 19 on both channels, pretty close on the left channel at about 0.8% distortion at 0 dB and made a number of recordings until I was satisfied with it. And so, Trevor, I hope uh, you're happy with the deck and that it makes your mix downs exactly the way you want them to. Thank you for watching.